Okay, welcome back everybody. Uh, just a quick video, just to update us on the fixes from video eight. Um, so the two issues we had was no OSDF between the switch and the fire powers and the failover of the HSRP wasn't working correctly. Um, so I found the two fixes. Uh, we'll start with the OSPF. So this was quite an easy fix. Uh, at the end of video seven, we realized that we were tagging a VLAN 301 from the core switch up to the firepower and the firepower was expecting it to be untagged. So we went ahead and we configured uh, this command here, switch port trunk native VLAN 301, which brought up the link between the core switch and the firepower. Uh, however, it seems we didn't save that, so that was the issue why OSPF wasn't coming up. So if we do a show OSPF neighbor, we can see there 11.11.11. Um, 11, 11. Uh, we didn't specify a, a router ID in the OSPF config, so it's using its highest IP. But we can see the actual address of the, the neighbor is um, 10.11.0. So that's up and running now. The other issue we had was that the failover wasn't working for HSRP and the fix for that was we were missing a command on router 2 preempt. It took me a while to find this because I didn't think this was needed. I thought that with the SLA statement we have on router 1 we're tracking it there as soon as we take that 20 off um, the priority of 110 that drops to 90 and therefore router 2 with its priority of 95 should take over but apparently when you do an interface tracking you need that preempt command so let's just go ahead and test that we'll jump onto switch 2 Send a pingo to Cisco's DNS. That which is working. We will shut gig zero slash one. And I've shut the wrong interface. Okay, so the internal HSRP works fine. Um, yeah, so let's shut down the right interface this time. Okay, and the ping has failed. Interface goes down. We should see this tracking statement go down. We should see this become the standby router. Router 2 become the active, and then the thing should pick back up again. Okay. Yep, there we go. That's router 1 from active to speak, router 2 from standby to active, and things are back up. We'll do a no shot on that interface to put it back as we want it. So the interface is up. The SLA should come up, the track statement should come up, and then ultimately the HSRP should become active. This should be more seamless than the failover the other way. Okay, there's the track statement up, and there's the HSRP change back. And there we have it. Okay, so just a quick video just for them amendments. Um, if you enjoyed it, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.